an audio only recording of an exercise session for Vision of Adventure. This recording is supported by Disability Rights UK, a fitness and body conditioning session led by Paddy Finn. Please note that you need some weights for this session. These can be as simple as two tin cans or two water filled bottles. Right. Hi, Louise. Hello. Oh, OK, uh, so I think um, we'll get going. Um, so I'm, if you want to leave your um, I'm quite happy if you don't mute yourself. And I know there'll be some mo groaning and moaning and puffing and panting, uh, which is fine because this is the first session. Um, and I'm quite happy for you to be able to if you don't understand something, because I'm bringing putting in some new exercises. Um, uh, from, from last year, uh, if I put some new things in and you're not quite sure if in this first session um, we can get that ironed out, so I'm, I can then try and give the clearer instructions so people know what to do, um, that would be, um, so that's, that's my, one of my aims of this session. Um, another aim of the session is just to go through the exercises uh, so that you know what they are and we'll probably only get through one uh, one set. So we'll do each exercise once. Um, and then following weeks, right, I won't take as much time to explain it. Um, and then we'll, we'll probably get a couple of, um, put a couple of sets in. So we'll go through each exercise twice. So that's the plan. So that's basically what happened last time. Um, so uh, that's how we started. Okay, so the structure of the session, There'll be a little bit of a warm up, so there'll be a little bit of jogging and, and, and swinging around, swinging arms and um, just warming our body up just to get us ready for the, the exercises. Um, and then after that, I'll go through each exercise, explain it and give you an amount of time to do the exercise. So I won't say do 10 press ups or 10 uh, bicep curls. I'll say, right, you've got so many seconds to do this exercise and you do it in your time. The reason I do that is um, some people will be probably starting, if they're doing anything with weights, they'll be starting with very light weights. Uh, and um, I'm starting off with just uh, some tins. I've got tin tomatoes. Uh, I'm not using weights at the minute. I'm just going to use tin tomatoes to give me a little bit of resistance. Um, if you're somebody who's doing quite a lot of training with um, weights, then you'll probably uh, not do as many reps, but you'll, um, but you'll want to, and probably not as many reps and they'll probably be a little bit slower. Uh, so that's why I give it time rather than, um, uh, rather than giving you um, a number to do. Because somebody who's got a tin of tomatoes, they can do 10 really, you know, 10 bicep curls really quickly and easily. Somebody who's got a, like a, um, a five or 10 kilogram weight in their arm will be doing it a lot slower. So we just do it on time. Uh, okay. Um, when we've done through, gone through all the exercises, then we'll do some stretches to finish off. It will probably take about an hour this evening. Um, um, if it, you know, might take a little bit longer, might be a little bit less, but we'll wait and we'll, we'll take it there. Okay, so let's get going. Because uh, time is against us. So, first of all, standing up. If you stand up. And first little exercise is just to do a little bit of jogging. So we're going to do some jogging on the spot. Just to sort of warm our legs up. Right. We just, uh, this first bit is about raising heart rate. And the fact that you're sort of jogging means you can hear me. So that's good. There are some people I can't see. Um, so, uh, Jules, you've sort of wandered off. <laughs> so if you come slightly, yeah, a little bit more left, there you go, I can see I, you. I don't want to drift into Tessa's dog bed. <laughs> <laughs> Not a good look. <laughs> oh, all, these, all these technical things. You know. I know. <laughs> oh, don't want to go into a dog bed. So <laughs> nice, just nice and easy on your toes. Just raising the heart rate a little bit. Okay. And relax. So next one. Next exercise, next uh, warm up is we're going to do some arm swings. 
people do these in a variety of ways. You can do them both together. Uh, you can do one than the other. But nice big arm swings. Start off nice and slowly. So right over your head and pushing them back. Okay. And so if you're only doing one, now do the other one. Swing the arms. And now what we're going to do is uh, change direction. So go forward. Can you go backwards now? Well, unless you were going forward to start with, go backwards now. Okay, so change direction. Swing it around, nice and loose. Shake the hands. Okay, good. All right, now we're going to do some uh, rotations. So here, uh, all you do, arms out, and then you just sort of swing it from side to side, nice and gently. So turning your whole body, so your trunk, your head, everything round, feet facing forward, and everything else is just... Turning round. Nice and loose. So warming up that middle part of our body. And stop there. Okay, now we're going to do a little bit of marching. So before we were very much on our toe, just doing little steps, this time I want you to pick your knees up nice and high. So Marching and swinging your arms together. So nice and high with the knees. Has everybody got trainers on or, or just bare feet or socks? Trainers. Trainers. All right, okay. I'm, I'm barefooted, but you know, that's the sort of guy I am. <laughs> Are you actually doing the exercises as well? Uh, yeah. Did, have you always done the exercises? Uh, not always. When we get to the... Um, when um, when we're doing two sessions, I tend to watch more, so I yeah. can make sure people have got the technique because we're rattling through things a bit faster. Um, and some people have got a bit of can see a little bit, so sometimes it helps if they can see somebody swinging their arms around. Okay, uh, now this is a new one. We're, uh, sorry, stop there, please. <laughs> oh, you could have kept you going. Right, uh, walkouts. Now walkouts. I didn't do this last time, so this is a new one. Uh, this is going to help uh, a little bit of, um, yeah, round through the glutes and also the core and the back. So start with, let me explain the whole thing before you do anything. So you're going to bend at the middle, so your hands are, so your hands reach the floor. You can have a slight bend in the knees, that's okay. You don't have to have your legs locked out. We're not trying to sort of stretch your hamstrings. So put your hands on the floor and then walk forward until you're in like the plank position and then so walk your hands forward till you're in the plank position and then walk your hands back so you can then get back up again called an inchworm 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 yeah it is nice. an inchworm yeah right, okay so it's bend at the waist hands uh, reach for the floor have your knees have some softness in your knees some bending your knees then walk your hands out so you're in like that plank or press up position and then walk your hands back so you can then get up again. So it, nice and gently. So stretch it out and then walk it back. So just keep doing that. Do that three or four times. Okay, you can get one more tight timing. I should disappear at all. She's turned the lights off. It's all gone dark. Oh, sorry, my battery was low, so. <laughs> okay, it's all right. Okay. All right, so if you get back to standing and uh, shake yourself out. Now, I do believe somewhere along the line, I think I put in the instructions. If you've got a, a handy chair or a sofa, that's useful for this exercise because we're going to be doing squats. For those of you who have done squats before, and you're quite comfortable standing like in a space and you don't need a wall or a chair or anything, that's cool. Um, if you've uh, not done them before or you would like a little bit of support, it's good to have uh, like a chair or a sofa behind you. So as you lower down, you've got something very positive to sort of say, hey, yeah, that's the chair, I can now come back up. Most chairs that we have are set at a height that your thighs, and your uh, lower legs will be at right angles. Okay, so, uh, and that's, a, that's as far as we need to go. 
Um, for those of you who are experienced and keen and want to use hold of weight as well, you can. But that's your choice. If you want to go, if you just want to do it, air, what they call air squats with no weight at all, that's cool. That's fine. So find yourself, uh, find your starting position. So if you do want to be near the sofa, get near the sofa um, or a chair. So first of all, get your feet comfortably apart. And it might be worth just doing some soft bends just to go, right, does that feel okay? Do I feel comfortable? Just have a little play. Um, I normally do this uh, to set my feet. Okay, once you've set your feet, so the squat, um, you want to be facing forward. And first thing you do is hinge at the hips. So the hips go back and then we bend the knees. And we, if we start, look, basically if you look forward, that'll stop you cur curling your back over. So your back straight and you're facing forward. Okay, have a go. You go down as far as you feel comfortable. So you don't have to get, you don't have to get your backside on your heels. Um, if you just want to, if you want to get down halfway, that's fine. Just as long as you feel comfortable. Okay, so there's uh, yep. Yeah, so you're all you're all doing slightly different depth, but that's okay. It's control. Um, knee should feel okay. Knee shouldn't be going too far, but there's lots of. I can see hips going back. Steve Best, if you spin round 180 degrees, I can see your what your hips are doing. I can see your knees at the minute. Okay, you're happy there. Right, that's good. That's right. Okay. Back straight. Um, back straight, right. And um, right, okay, just relax for a second. Couple of things to think about on the squats. One is um, make sure that your core is tight. So before you start, sorry, okay, core tight. And then with your feet, imagine that your feet are trying to tear the tear your carpet apart. So we don't get any, we don't, what we don't want is any knees going inwards. So if we, we'll just do one, uh, a couple more. So Imagine you're like pushing your thighs outwards, your feet are tearing the carpet apart, you engage that core, and then same exercise. So same thing. So engage those quads, engage that core, hinge back with the hips, looking good. Okay, right, good. So I've done a bit of technique there. So working with the legs, so we can relax for a moment. Uh, this one again, you can use weights if you wish. Um, and what we're going to do here is um, I call them I call them lunges. So basically, what happens here? I don't want um, we don't need to step forward unless you're very confident about your lunges and that your knee doesn't go over your toes. If you're new to lunges, what I uh, suggest you do is do uh, what we do call the split squat. So one foot forward. So choose a foot, in my case it's going to be left foot forward, so as if we were taking a stride, um, get balanced, and we're going to lower, so for me I've got my left foot forward, so I'm going to lower my right knee to the floor, I'm not going to go forward, I'm lowering it down, so my knee, my front knee, is, is at about a right angle, so um, Thank you. Jenny, uh, so Steve, Steve Hodges, um, you may want to step slightly forward, but it's up to you how you, how good your knee feels. Because if you've had knee issues, then I don't, you know, you just be very careful. If you've got weights, you know, this may be a time to grab some weights. You know, if you've got your couple of, I've got my tins here, so we just go gently up and down. And if we want to add some complexity to this, we can go down and we can twist. Whilst we're doing. Okay, so if you're going down. Leg bend. Back so is that you, Steve? Yeah. yeah. So so what? if your your back leg goes down to the floor, if you were um if you're a good Catholic boy like me, we used to call it genuflecting. So you know when you sit uh, so if you go to church and people sort of sometimes genuflect, they put the knee onto the onto the ground as they go into the church. I don't know if you are aware of that. Can't do that, yeah. my knees. If you can't do it, if make too much noise. <laughs> yeah, all right, okay. But you can do the exercise, but just don't go as far. Okay. Just go, just go where you're comfortable. 
and it's about that, the, the, the weight is in the front knee. Right, we need to swap legs now if you haven't done. So swap legs. So same thing again about stride forward. <coughs> and it's a lowering down. You're lowering your hips down rather than just going forward. Um, and if you're feeling super cool, you can do a twist. So in this case, my right foot forward is forward and I'm turning to the right to twist. Put a weight in there as well, so we've got a, like a double action going on, but only if you feel confident with it. It's okay. Buddy, could you have... explain the twist? Okay, so um, as like I when you you put your, your back knee down onto the floor, yes. do you do you do it when your knees on the floor or? So as you go down, as that back knee is going down, then you twist away from the knee that's on the floor. Oh, does that make sense? Yes. Yeah. So I've got my left knee is back, my right knee is forward, I lower down and I turn to my right. And then as I come up, I turn back forward. And do you fall over while you're doing it as well? Uh, sometimes. Um, <laughs> what some people do, and I can see a couple of people here, is they just make sure they've got something like a sofa or a chair just to put their hand on. Um, uh, so that, that's all, also something you do. Okay. You've had a play at that with both legs now, we can, we can move on. Uh, what is, I don't know what that's doing. Okay, so next exercise. Um, let's go for the bicep curl. So we're standing upright, uh, we've got our weights. So grab your, if you've got, uh, got your tins or you've got some weights, get your weights in hand. So standing feet about uh, shoulder width apart, nice and comfortable, knees soft, hands by your sides with your <laughs> knuckles facing backwards, weights in your hands. And what we're, what we're doing here is keeping our elbows into our ribs and bending our el at the elbow and raising our weight up to our shoulders. And if it's a tin can, it probably feels pretty easy. And so next time, you can think, well, I'll, I'll get an empty, uh, I'll, I'll save the empty two litre water, uh, milk cartons and I'll fill those up and that'll give me 2K, which will be a lot heavier than a 50 gram can of beans. So here, the technique, the important thing here is technique that the elbows don't, don't move around. So everything goes up and down. Okay, so bicep curls nice and easy and you can build the weights up to however much you want to do. Okay, good. So, um, oh, love this one, tricep extension. <coughs> I'm going to try and explain this one. I think last time we, we got in a pickle, but we'll, hopefully it'll be, be, it'll be better this time. Okay, so tricep extension. Uh, you need one tin or one weight. Okay, so if you follow my instructions and do the same as me, then hopefully we're okay. I am going to step forward, just a normal sort of stride forward, with my left foot. I'm then going to put my left forearm on my left knee. So I've set forward my left foot, so it's my forearm, so my body, I'm bending from my, my hips, from my waist, and I'm leaning forward. Okay, right, I can't see many feet going forward. Right, there we go, yeah. Bruce, you're gonna step forward, there we go. Nice. So, um, yeah, forearm on the leg, there we go. Okay, so we start with, we start with our arms straight down and our, our weight by our hip, so, and our elbows into our ribs. And then we bend our, bend our arms so our, the weight comes forward to our shoulder and then we extend and straighten that arm. But the elbow stays in line with the hips. So the muscle that we're using is the muscle on the back of the shoulder, uh, back of the arm, sorry. Okay. So, so Steve, if you get, get that's it, right, that, right, rather than straightening forward. Okay, Steve, best, if you put your hand, start it with your, the weight, the tin by your hip. That's it, straighten your arm. Straight your arms, right, but put your arm back so your, your wrist is going uh -huh. past your hip. There you go, right, down a bit. 
So it's in line. So yeah, your elbow is touching your ribs. Yeah, yeah. And just bend at the elbow and then straighten. You've got it. Okay. Doesn't okay. have to go behind. Just straighten. So the muscles that we're trying to use are the muscle just at the back of the arm. Okay. Okay, so back and forth. So the weight comes. So the arm, Steve Bateman, if you straighten your arm for me. Um, so it's so, right. And now take your hand, your arm back so it's in line with your body and going beyond your hip. So uh, arm up a bit. Okay, and then straighten that arm. Okay. Right, so keep the elbow into your ribs and then bend at the elbow so the weight comes up to your shoulder. But your upper arm stays still. That's it, and then straighten. There, that's the one. Right, and then straighten that arm out as much as you can. If you want to test what's working, you can use your opposite arm just to feel the muscles on the back of your arm. So take your, take your opposite hand and put it on the back of your, your the working arm. Okay, time to swap over. So that was left foot forward using our right arm. So now it's left, right foot forward using our left arm. So right foot forward, right forearm is on the right leg. Hand is straight along our body. So our wrist is going down by our hip. And then we're bending at the elbow and then straightening the arm. So the upper arm doesn't go anywhere. It's just the lower arm that's going back and forth. And then we can have a feel of that muscle to see if those triceps are working. Yeah, this is much better than last time. So Steve Bowman, if you straighten that arm right out, that'd be cool. Good. Okay, and relax there. Let's stop that one. Right, have a give it. Okie doke. So that's everything that we're going to do on uh, standing up. So all the other exercises um, are going to be on the floor. So if you need to adjust your camera, that'd be really cool. Otherwise, I can't see you. Um, so uh, Jenny and Steve, I can see you. Steve Bateman, I can see you. Bruce, I can see you. Um, Jules, I'll just move you. mine. Yeah, I'll move mine down. Hold on. Yeah. Jules, you're going to move yours down. Liz, uh, I'll leave to is that, do some of yours. Is that all right? What, Jules, where are you? Is that Jules? I'm here. Right, okay. <laughs> um, I can see your face. Is, could it tip down a little bit further? Ah, Steve, best. I can see you. I can see all of you. Right, that's cool. All right, okay, we're all right. Right, okay. No cheating. Right, so first one is lap pull over. Okay, so what we're going to do here, we're going to lie flat on our back. We've got, uh, sorry, you need your weights for this one. So grab your weights, whatever they are, your weights or your uh, tins, of, uh, tins of beans. So grab those. Lie flat on your back. Your hands go above your head, so your the backs of your hands are on the floor. Keeping your arms straight, you bring your hands over and then down over to your hips, and then they go back again. So starting with arms extended above your head, that's it. That's looking good, yeah. So and they go right above your head onto the floor. But behind you. Yeah, right behind you. So Steve and Jenny, that'd be exciting because you're about to, you, you can just, you're very <laughs> close to hitting each other. But there you go. <laughs> okay. So, and then are they coming back to ceiling level or are they coming back down onto the, to the floor in front of you then? So as you bring them over, keep it, yep. try and keep those arms straight and they come over and they come back onto the floor. So All right, okay. Yeah. So you yeah. start above your head, yeah. Big arc, semicircle, and onto the floor and back again. Are your elbows are bent. <laughs> um, idea for this one, your arms are straight. I mean, if you do them bent, it's a slightly different uh, exercise. So you'll be using your pecs. 
the pectoralis, which are the muscles on the chest. Go, go more like that. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, and then right over, so they go right over to your hips. Who got room? After <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all, yeah, might need to just to position okay. yourself right. Okay. Move the camera. <laughs> okay, it's his first time. This is his first time out, so yeah, we're going to miss people. Okay, and stop there. Let's do something really, really straightforward. We can just put our weights to the side. So we're going to do press ups. Now, press ups you can you can do a variety depending on how strong you are and how many you know how often you do press ups. So, the easiest the easiest one is to um, if you're on all fours, so you're on your hands and knees. Start with on your hands and knees. So the easiest version is just to take your knees back slightly, uh, so you've got a bit of weight on your arms, and you do press ups on your knees. So you don't want your knees right under your hips. Okay, all right. Okay, so you don't want your knees right under your hips. You want your knees so the weight is on, on your, so you've got some weight on your arms. And then you lower, you bend your elbows, keep your elbows close into your body. So that's, that's the easy version. And the easy version is fine. You know, so if you can do 20 of those, that's good. So the next version, which you may want to try, so you can, you can try all of these, so we can have a play, and then you decide which one. The next version is to, in the, in the plank position, so you're on your toes, uh, you're on your hands, your body's straight, bend at the elbows, and it's okay for the elbows to go slightly away from the body. So bend the elbows until your chest comes down to the floor and push back up. Down to the floor. And push back up and then have a go at that try and keep the elbows in rather than uh, uh keep the elbows sort of pretty near the body rather than going out to the side and then the last one for anybody who's feeling uh, super strong you can just put your feet on the sofa or on, on the stool so there's more weight on your arms no. okay <laughs> so i'll let you have a play i'll, I'll Time you for 20 seconds so that you know, you know, and whatever you can do for 20 seconds. Okay, three, two, one, off we go. No, keep straight, like a board. That's good, I like that coaching. <laughs> now, if you keep your head in line, that helps. Bruce, you're looking good, man, you've been practicing. Well, that's you, Paddy. And Jenny, and that's 20 seconds. That's okay, so that will give you an idea. So if you know, so whichever press up you were doing, if you were doing, if you were doing on the knees and went, well, that's really easy. So next time maybe you need to go just on your toes. Okay. Right, next one. Oh, more work in the press up position. So in the press up position, and we're going to do something called shoulder tap. So we take take the press up position. Um, and you may want to make sure that your feet are a little bit apart, just to give you balance. Um, what you're going to do is, I'm going to take my right hand and tap my left shoulder and put my hand down. Then I'm going to take my left hand and tap my, right, my opposite shoulder, my right shoulder. <laughs> and so, and what this does is a bit of strength in the and shoulders good. and arms, but there's also a lot through the core. There will be a little bit of movement. Okay. So I'll give you a little play at that. So you do want the pressure position, ideally not on your knees. Okay, I'm going to give you 10 seconds from now, so you can count how many you get done in 10 seconds. That's five. And that's 10. Okay. Should you keep your hips still or rock from side to side? Um, your hips have got to move a little bit because you're transferring the weight on one side and the other. You, I think you'd have you'd be in, have to be incredibly stable and strong, but not to move. You know, to take that hand off and have that weight. Yeah. So because you're going from four points of contact to three, so there will be a little bit. Um, but what you can do to mitigate that is is make sure that you're um, tightened all your core. 
So it is a bit of a core exercise as well as uh, strength for the arms. Okay, so bear in mind, we'll be doing 30 seconds of each of these exercises once we, uh, when we start next week. Okay. So the next one is called a tabletop lift. It's called a what? A tabletop lift. Okay. So we start with this one. We're sitting up and we're sitting on our backside. Uh, we've got our knees bent uh, and our feet are comfortably on the floor. So you don't have to do any, anything extreme. Hands are behind you, maybe just slightly behind your hips with your <laughs> fingers pointing fingers pointing forward okay so you've got uh, feet is probably at least yeah probably shoulder width apart because we're gonna we're both gonna use them to balance in a minute and then the movement is to push our hips up so we're as flat as we can be okay so we then so we're like a table but uh, but our tummies are facing the ceiling and then we go down so it's pushing up and then down okay and continue good so let your head go back as well you don't have to swing it back but just let it go back okay so this is good for arms legs core glutes hamstrings so this does a lot of body parts all in one exercise okay so do you go back down to the sitting position every time or go down in the tabletop position so you the, the, you go back to the sitting position and then and then you up up into the tabletop so the tabletop is when you're pushing your hips towards the ceiling okay, okay. i'll give you another few seconds to pr pr practice that i think you're really just are you just tapping the mat really and then going back up again yeah i mean yeah. as you get stronger and more confident you'll be literally tapping the mat and then straight back up so you're spending more time exercising than sitting with your backside on the floor if you know what i mean okay a couple more and then we'll move on to the next one are your feet flat or your heels up or your toes up which uh feet flat on the floor yeah okay uh, you can you can just relax now uh feet flat on the floor uh so that when you push up you're getting a good push through the legs yeah does that make yeah. sense yeah, yeah. happy okay Good. I like, I like this with people being able to ask questions. Right. Now, similar one. Um, we're now going to do a uh, one-legged glute bridge. Um, and as, as you may guess, this is going to be working on your glutes. So your, your, all the muscles in your, in your backside. Great for runners and cyclists, this. Okay. So, we start with, uh, we're lying on the floor, back is on the floor. And then we bring our knees up so we can put our feet comfortably flat on the floor. Okay. We, our shoulders stay on the floor at all times. Hands stay on the floor and arms. Um, if you take your right leg and extend your right leg so it's in line with your left leg. So basically, imagine that your two thighs are clamped together. Okay. So Bruce, that leg needs to go up a bit. Okay, we've got those two legs clamped together, and then you're gonna the leg that is bent and on the floor pushes up so the hips go up towards the ceiling, and the the leg that's not on the floor that just stays in line. The thigh stays in line with the leg that's moving. Okay, so and Bruce, push up. Push up with that left leg, right. No, right, so your right leg stays in line with your left leg. Well, should that one be? Should it, should it be up straight yeah. like that? Or should yeah, it should, should be, be up there. Right, that's it, power over the arm. Okay, Steve, uh, Steve Bateman, <laughs> if your left foot is on the floor, keep your left foot on the floor, and then push up through your left foot to get your hips off the floor. Use your arms and keep your shoulder, and then sort of hinge around your shoulders. So push that left foot so your hips are going up, off the, off the floor, towards the ceiling. Uh, got it that's it perfect and again there you go have a play on the other side if you haven't done that this is great i can see some people i can just see a foot arriving <laughs> okay have a play with the other side 
Steve Hodges, that looks good. Jenny, I can't see what you're looking You're just doing. kind of pushing yourself up, is that right? Yeah, you're pushing your hips up oh. and trying to keep that leg in line. Okay. Needs to so the work is being one done by the one. bent leg. And one leg straight um, front. Okay. Steve Best, I've lost your picture. Um, you can check if you're doing it properly. <laughs> if you um, if you put a hand on the uh, the knee that's bent and doing the work, if you put your hand on your glute on your backside, you should feel that tense. You know, as you push up, you will feel it going like right. Yeah, that 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 muscle's working. Yes. I'm finding that I'm using my back more than I probably should be. Right. Okay. So if you're using your back, that may be because get, try bringing your heel a bit closer to your backside. Okay, yeah, I think. Does that feel better? Possibly. I'll let, I'll let you know. Okay, yeah. Keep, keep uh, yeah, that heel needs to be pretty close, yeah, close in. Okay, once you've done a few, then you can, you can relax. I like this one because you can you can tell that your glutes are working. And oh. so many people say, say, oh, you're not using your glutes, but this is a good one to make sure they're awake and working. And we've all gone quiet. <laughs> yeah. Okay, okay, and relax then. All right, next exercise is called um well it's called the bird dog, which I think oh, is I a like the bird, dog. bird dog. I think somebody sort of um, sort of stolen half a name from from uh, a yoga exercise. Um, right. So, bird dog. We, the starting position is on your hands and knees. I'm getting warm doing all this exercise. Thank you. Right. So, starting position is on your hands and knees. So, hands under your shoulders, knees under your hips. Okay. And so the movement is. Um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go for a left arm and a right leg. So I raise my left arm up, and I then straighten my left leg. So I'm balancing on my right hand and my left knee. Superman. So Superman, and hold. And what you want to do here is engage the glutes. So right, but it's yeah, not massive. Bit of tension in the glutes, and control through the core, and then down. So bring your hand down, your knee down, and then swap over and hold. One, two, three, down. Now, it's easy to do this and just sort of swing your arms back and forth. But what you want to do here, you need to do this consciously and mindfully and think, right, arm out. So left arm out, right arm out. And I'm actually putting some tension in my core. And then I come back down. And then opposite. <laughs> Right and left, yeah, if you, it is possible to fall over on this one. <laughs> Three and down. Three. So if you give yourself a count of three in the extended position, that would be good. You can sort of obviously do it for longer, where you've got that, you're, you're, there's some tension in the, in your, in the extended leg, so push that leg the extended leg away, push the extended hand away, and tighten through that core, and then back. Um, the usefulness of this one is most of the things we do, running, cycling, swimming, we are, um, this is the movement through the core, that it's opposite hand and opposite leg that tend to move at the same time. Okay, so have a little play with that one. Right. Okay, Aaron. Once you're happy with that, you can relax. That's right. So, I um this bit I've made up. It's a it's a sort of um, a cocktail of uh, core exercises, which I find. Is very effective, but hurts. 
Right. He so, laughs maniacally. <laughs> he giggled in the background. Okay. So uh, let me explain what we're going to do before we do any movements at all. Uh, uh, but basically, the first, uh, first, uh, the first part is going to be some sit-ups. Um, now, how you do your sit-ups, I don't mind, as long as your knees are bent, your feet are flat on the floor. I, what I like to do is put my hands on my thighs and I slide my hands up my thighs as far as I can. So if I can get like my fingertips, my hands, my wrists past my knees, um, that, you know, so that's uh, uh, a good measure. I can see how well I'm doing. Um, I mean, other people prefer to like put their fingertips on their on their temples. The temptation is if you put your hands sort of round your temples, is that you swing your elbows to get you going. Whereas if your hands are on your thighs, nothing's helping you. It's all core. There's no 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 momentum, and so you can just slide them up and down. And for me. Uh, when I first started doing it, I could just get my fingertips to my kneecaps. Uh, and then as I got better, then I could get further and further up because my core was working. So that's the first part. Oh, I can't do this. Can you see? If you play before tomorrow. Okay. So the second one is a heel tap. So uh, this might need, yeah, you might have to listen carefully and you might need some clarification on this one. So start your lying. Uh, Feet again are on the floor, knees are bent, hands are by your sides, and then what I'd like you to do is lift your feet slightly off the floor, lift your shoulders slightly off the floor, and then reach to touch the heel of each foot in turn. So I'm laid down, I've got my feet on the floor, my back's on the floor, my hands are on the floor. Then I lift my feet slightly off the floor, not very far at all, just, just enough so they're free. I lift my shoulders off the floor, so my, and my arms are free, and then I go from side to side. It's a sort of sideways movement, and I'm touching my heels or, you know, as far down my foot as I can from side to side. Two, three, four. So this is working the obliques a little bit as well as... Um, as well as your 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 your, uh, your core, your abdominus. Don't quite get it. Okay. I'll be touching the opposite foot. Ju ju uh, right, Bruce, just do it again. Let me see. No, no. So your left hand to just left heel. That. Yeah. So it's a sideways. So keep up. Uh, keep your shoulders off. Keep your feet off the floor and your shoulders off the floor, and then go from side to side, not together. Side to side. Yeah. So go left heel first and then right heel. That's okay. it. Okay. See how it's slightly different. So it's using yeah. your obliques, which are the muscles down your side. I was wondering how it was doing the obliques. There you kind go. Of big and twist sort of thing. Happy? No. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to do all three, one after the other, for ten, uh, for sort of fifteen seconds, and then you'll hopefully feel the. Um, the effect so the heel tap and then the last one is is a crunch a sit up with a twist so this time we do have our fingertips on our temples or behind our ears or some people like just to cross their hands over their shoulders which is fine um uh, but our feet aren't on the floor this time our feet are up uh, at uh, so there's a right angle at our hips and our knees so our feet are our lower leg is parallel to the floor and we sit up and twist. So in my case, it's my right elbow goes to my left knee, then my left elbow goes to my right knee. So there's a bit of rocking going on. Is that a bicycle crunch, do you mean? Like you, Bicycle you, crunch, that'll do, yeah. Your leg goes in and out at the same time as your arm. Obviously yeah, leg like, goes in, yeah, leg can go in and out. Doesn't have to, yeah. but leg goes in and out, that's all good. All right. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so is it it's a sit up then with your legs flat on the floor and the and the last one with your leg your feet on the floor uh, at right well, angles. The last one is with your feet at right angles. Yeah. So oh, right. The first sit up is, is with your feet lying down. Yeah. All oh, right. I was doing that wrong there. 
That's all isn't right. It bad, isn't it bad for your back if you do sit-ups with the legs flat on the floor? Um, I've not heard that. Do you mean I've straight up or bent? Okay. I don't right. quite get the last one. So... Okay, Bruce, just show me what you're doing. So well, I'm, I'm, I haven't managed to do anything yet. Okay, so all right, sorry. Sit so, up, it's a sit up. Right, okay. And then, and then what? Hang on, just lie back down, Bruce. Right, what I'd like you to do is bend uh, bend your knees. Okay. Right, and then, right, bring your knees up so they're above your hips and your feet are off the floor. Feet off okay. the floor. That, that, that one? Now lift your feet. Yeah, that's it. So you can lift your feet uh, so they're at right angles. Yeah, see, your legs aren't flat on the floor. Yeah. But no, your feet, not on the last one, your feet aren't flat on the floor, no. Yeah. Oh. So feet are off the floor in the last one, feet are on the floor in the first one. So we're going to go through all three, and hopefully you'll, um, you'll see what I mean why it's... Uh, I'm only going to do 15 seconds, uh, just to get... of each, just to so you can see the, get the feel. Okay. So the first one is sitting up, sliding your hands up your thighs. And we're going to go for 15 seconds. So you go your pace, feet flat on the floor. Okay, three, two, one, off we go. And rack them in, that's uh, halfway, that's seven minutes. Seven minutes? <laughs> and that's 15 seconds, okay. So now we're going to change to a uh, heel tap, so that's the one where you're touching one heel then the other. So get yourself ready, shoulders off the floor, three, two, one, off you go. Are your feet on the floor or off the floor for this one? Just slightly off the floor. Oh. So what we're trying to do is use the obliques as well as the, um, as the abdomin abdominus, and that's 15 seconds of that. Okay, and then lastly, crunch with a twist or bicycle, Crunches, whatever you want to call them. Three, two, one, off we go. Get up as high as you can. I can't get up at all. <laughs> and stop there. Right, okay, cool. Right. So, um, some, of the, some of them will be hard and some will be easy. Uh, but I think when you've done three of those that you may feel like, yes, there's, I can definitely feel an effect there. Hopefully you can. Tomorrow. <laughs> well, tomorrow, yeah, well, tomorrow. Right, okay, so that, oh, so we're nearly, the hour is nearly done. So we're going to do, um, oh, last one. Um, we're going to do some back extensions. So, warning, warning, back extensions, we are very, very gentle. We are slow. We don't, there's no jerking movements here. If you know that you can do back extensions, been doing them for ages, and you're really comfortable with them, you do what you want to do. If you haven't done back extensions for a while, or you're not sure about them, uh, just follow my instructions. So, you are lying down, you are on your front. Hands are by your sides. I know, I won't lie on the floor, don't you around here. Hands are by your sides. And all you're doing is keeping your head in line with your body, so you don't bend your head, you don't throw your head back. All you're doing is raise, trying to raise your chest off the floor. And it's nice and gentle. Um, for those of you who are a bit more, if, if you do it a lot, some of you may raise your feet off the floor as well. But if not, just nice and gentle, take it easy. All we're doing is just trying to do a little bit of work on that back and actually do some opposition muscles to all the stuff we've just done on the core. So gently, gently, um, and if you're, like I say, if you've done heaps and you know that you can sort of get your chest, all your chest, all your ribs off, off the floor and that, that's fine. Um, but you go at your pace. Okay, three, two, one. Okay, and we'll stop there. Right, while we're on the floor, we can do some um, stretches. So we'll start off with, uh, with our arms. So, into, you can interlock your fingers, four are on the floor still, interlock your fingers, put them in your, in your, uh, in your lap, then turn your hands um, 
turn your hands round, so interlock your fingers, turn your hands so your palms are facing out, and then you can just raise your hands above your head, pull your shoulders back. You can lie on the floor, do this, you can kneel up and do this. And it's just a nice, easy stretching out those shoulders above your head. Three, two, one. Okay. And then the next one is put your hands behind your back. Turn your hands so your palms are facing away from you, so they're facing the wall behind you. Um, and then take your hands as high as they'll go, keeping your arms straight. So you're without sort of falling forward too much. If you want to stand up and do it, that's fine. Three, two, one. Okay, and relax. So next exercise is to, uh, next stretch, take your right hand, uh, your right arm, sorry, and be like a, a signpost. You're pointing straight out in front of you. Take your uh, left hand for just above the elbow and then pull that arm across. So just let your right arm go as your left arm pulls it across. Your left arm pulls it across so it's across your, across your body and it's high. And give it a little bit, you should feel a little bit of a stretch across that. There's deltoids, the shoulder muscles there. Three, two, one. Okay, and shake that one out. So this time left arm straight out, right arm just above the elbow. <laughs> straight across. Excuse me, there is a message for you. Keeping the arm straight. Oh, that's interesting. That arm is definitely tighter than the uh, the other one. Three, two, one. All right. Okay, we we'll shake that out. Um, a little bit of standing up now, and um, we're going to stretch our quads, our quadriceps, so the big muscles down the front of our legs. So you may want to have something close, like a wall or a chair, just to balance yourself. Um, so we'll start with a little, uh, right foot. So right foot, bend your right uh, knee, take hold of your right knee with your left hand, or if you prefer your right hand. I mean, there is an argument that it's better with your left hand, but I don't think it makes that much difference. Um, try and keep, uh, keep your body straight upright. Keep your knees together um, and push. If you push your hips forward, you'll get a bit of a stretch. You'll get a stretch through the front of your leg. You may not have to do, you know, if you've been doing heaps of running lately, you might find it's a bit tighter than. Okay. Three, two, one. Uh, relax, shake it out. So then we're going to change over. So for me, it's going to be left foot in my right hand. Keep my knees together, push my hips slightly forward, keep those legs together. Pull that foot up. Three, two, one. Okay, and we can relax and shake it out. Um, last one, a little bit for the hamstrings here. So, feet sort of the hip width, shoulder width apart. Um, slight bend in the knees, knees are soft, and then we just bend at the waist, let our hips go back, and then we just let our upper body just hang down. We're not locking out our knees, our knees can be, have a slight bend in them, and then we just hang down in a nice relaxed position. I think in uh, yoga they call it ragdoll. The time is now 7 p.m. Okay, and then just you can let it hang. Um, if you want to, you can do a little